All right, guys, more logarithmic functions today. Going to expand on what we did yesterday. Let's do it. Okay, first thing you'll see today in your assignment is going to be just going to put X in a couple of places and have you find it. Um, this first one, you would rewrite. Rewrite as an exponential function. So I'm going to put 2 to the X power 16. That's how you would rewrite that right there. So you can probably figure that out in your head. 2 to what power 16? The fourth power. Okay, not if you can't do it that way, I'll show you another way in class tomorrow where you can do that um, if you like actually doing work. So I can show you that tomorrow. The second one is just going to say x equals 5 to the fourth power. Remember, 5 to the fourth power equals that. So everybody knows 5 to the fourth power is 625. That's all there is to those. So the first thing you'll see tomorrow is some simple equations where you got to find x. x is either going to be over here or right there. So it should not be that huge of a deal. Okay, sketch the graph of log base 2 of x. I'm going to make an xy table the first time. Then we're just going to start rolling with it once you see what the parent graph looks like. Okay, so let's put in, first of all, you cannot put in a non-positive number in for x. Um, you can't do log of a negative number because 2, there's no way to raise 2 to any power and get 0 or a negative number. So I'm going to start just putting 1 in there. So I put 1 in for x. Um, y has to be 0 because 2 to the 0 power is 1. If I put 2 in there, 2 to the first power is 2. I'm going to put a 4, but only because 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be 2. So I'm going to kind of put those points on my graph. Um, 0, 1. Sorry, 1, 0 is right there. Remember the uh, ones we did the other day with exponential graphs? We went through 0, 1 on the y-axis. And because these are, remember, logs are inverses of exponential, the x and y switch. So that's what just happened with the 1, 0. 2, 1. 4, 2. Now, remember the other day... Um, when we did exponential function graphs, the x the x axis was the asymptote. Well, guess what? They're inverses. So today the y axis are the asymptote because the x's and y's just switch. And there's what the graph would look like of that exponential function. Oh, sorry, the logarithmic function. Every log function graph looks like that. It's going to cross right here. The second point is going to be whatever your base is one. Okay, let me show you a couple more here. Before I do that, look at these two. Uh, they're both base 2, the same graph we just did. I'm going to redraw that here. We went through 0, 1, we went through 2, 1, and 4, 2. And the graph did this. That's what we just did on the last page. This one has a negative in the front. A negative in the front. Let me change colors. Negative in the front reflects across the X. So it's going to do this. And instead, instead of going like that one did, it's, the points are going to come down here. And it's going to go just like that. It's going to be reflected across the X. Now, the second one here has a negative inside. It reflects across the Y. So the 1, 0 goes to negative 1, 0. The 2, 1 goes to negative 2, 1. The 4, 2 goes to negative 4, 2. And it's going to look just like this. So one of them is a reflection across the X with a negative in the front. One's a reflection across the Y with a negative inside, just like we've done all year long. All right, find the domain of each, uh, domain of each function and then sketch the graph. I think we'll go backwards. Let's sketch the graph first. First of all, it's got a plus 2 at the end, so everything's been moved up 2. I'm going to start here. So usually I'd put a point here at the 1, and because it's base 5, I would go 5, 1. Okay, that would be my two points. But the plus 2 at the end is going to shift everything up 2. It's going to shift that point up 2, that point up 2. Everything else is the same. Set graph is going to look just like that. Okay, this one has a minus 3 inside. This means the graph is going to be shifted right 3. So that means my asymptote... It's going to be shifted right three. So the asymptote is actually going to be right here. And my first point is usually one, zero. It's been shifted right three. So it's going to be four, zero. And I would love for that number inside there to be a 10 because log base 10 of 10 is one. To make that a 10 inside, I would have to go to 13. So I'm going to kind of just add that on here. I'm going to go to 13, one, which is right there. And the graph's going to look just like that all right so basically the bigger the base the flatter your graph gets the lower your base this kind of the steeper it gets i right, find the domain now if all they ask you for is domain um remember all logs have to be positive so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take whatever comes after my log and just do this right here it's got to be positive it can be it can't equal zero it has to be positive. So on this one, if I just move this x over and get x is less than 4, that would be what the domain is. Um, we'd probably write like this, all x such that x is less than 4. You know, that's how we've been writing it all year. Or you could do this way. You could also go 
negative infinity up to four with parentheses because, because. All right, so domain, whatever comes after your log has to be positive. That's where your domain comes from. And the last one, graph a natural log. Now, natural log, no big deal. First of all, I'm looking inside. No matter what the base is, I don't care if it's base two, base five, base 10, your asymptote is always the y-axis unless it's been shifted. This one's been shifted right to, which means my asymptote is now a two. Also, my first point is always at one zero, but this has been shifted right to also, so it's now three zeros. So that's where that point comes from. Or if it doesn't make sense, you can plug in the number three right here. And if you did that, it would give you this natural log of one. Remember, anytime you have a one right here, the answer is zero. So I plugged in three, I got zero. That's where that came from. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is I need to find one more point in there to, to make that work somehow. Um, and, you know, with the natural log, it's kind of hard to find another point that makes it work really well. Um, I'm just going to go with, like, I'd love for it to be like 2.718 inside there because it just be one. So to make that 2.718, I'm actually going to plug in 4.718, all that, all that big decimal. The reason I'm doing the 4.7 is because if I do that minus 2, it's going to be 2.7, which is the same as the base. So I'm going to go to 4.7 and then up 1 to write it. Just, it's an estimate right there. And then we'll draw our graph just like that. Now, also, domain. Let's check domain right here. Domain, remember, is whatever this part right here has to be greater than 0. You can also look at your graph. Remember, domain is how far left and right your graph goes. Well, this graph goes from two to forever. Okay, so that's your that'd be your domain um, from two to infinity. So you can do not only can you do it by algebraically like we did in the last slide, you can just look at your graph and do domain also. All right, that's all there is today. Pretty short one. Uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll work on this stuff. See you then.